Uh, in, our, in our family of pumps, we uh, offer five different uh, materials of construction, and we offer five different lanes. Uh, excuse me, five different models. So let's talk about uh, materials. Uh, why do we need five different materials? First of all, we are pumping uh, the most dangerous types of, uh, of chemicals and acids and so on. Uh, prior to having uh, this type of pump, people had a tendency to pour, tip, and ladle out of 55-gallon uh, drums and other vessels. So this gives us the safest uh, piece of equipment to transfer um, dangerous fluids from drums or other containers. So we're talking about acids, caustics, bleach, uh, solvents, flammables. We pump uh, thin fluids and we pump uh, with our high viscosity pumps uh, quite, quite thick fluids uh, well in excess of 100,000 centipoise. So let's uh, talk a little bit about the, the five materials. Our, our most popular is uh, the polypropylene and that covers a very broad range of, uh, of chemistry and beyond that we have a, a kynar pump which is also known as PVDF. You can see the difference in the color, white versus kind of a beige color. And um, then we have three metal materials. We start with aluminum, that's generally used for oils, and then 316 stainless steel and Hastelloy C. Um, two of those materials are designed for pumping flammables because they can be effectively grounded. And uh, on those tubes, the Hastelloy and the stainless, we have a grounding lug, as we do also on our motors that are approved for flammables. So any air motor is approved for flammables and then we have select electric motors uh, that are approved for flammables as well. Okay, so in our first design, let's talk, start with the 430 because I happen to be holding that. And in this design, we're going to do a close-up here to show the seal. Okay, so here we see the impeller and a seal that seals off the inner tube. So why, why do we want to seal off the inner tube? It has to do with cleanability. So if we're pumping multiple liquids with one pump, so easy to take it apart, sanitize it, put it back together, and you're ready to go. Now there's one other thing I want to mention. Uh, you may have noticed, let's do another close-up, Taylor. You may have noticed that uh, there's a little bit of metal exposure here on this seal. Now there are occasionally customers that would like to have no metal exposure. So we offer a bellow seal and we cover up that metal. So I think you get a look at that and uh, this is one option that many people are not aware that we offer. Okay, this uh, is the 430 and we call it the mechanical seal pump. The next pump is the 424, we call this a sealless pump. When I say sealless, there's no mechanical seal or packing, but we do have a radial lip seal that's used to protect the bearings, because bearings are not corrosion resistant, and we don't want fumes or liquid getting up into the bearings. Let's talk about um, the fact that we also offer a 50 millimeter uh, diameter. So this is a 41 millimeter, it's about an inch and a half, and I'm going to hold up the foot piece Taylor, if we could do a close-up here, and we can see the extra uh, size and, in my, in my opinion, uh, the added durability from the wall thickness. Uh, so I would always encourage you to upsell to the 50 millimeter because not only can you get higher flow or higher head capability, but more importantly on the non-metallic pumps, added durability because these pumps are, are Portable. They're, they're dropped inadvertently, thrown around, and, and abused. Those, the, a customer that purchases the 50 millimeter will never, uh, will never regret that. Okay, so we've covered two models, the 430 and the 424. Now let's go to the uh, 425. And this is a pump we call the, uh, the liquid saver or complete drainage pump. Um, now in our other pumps, when you empty a drum, how do you know it's empty? Well, no more liquids coming out of the discharge. But in reality, the last bit of fluid that went into this pump, you're asking air to push it up and out through the hose, which that will not happen. So what happens is when you um, take, turn off the motor, you get drain back, much like taking your finger off a straw. 
and you're going to drain back at least a half a gallon of product. So that can be an issue with, with certain customers. So the solution is a pump with a built-in foot valve. And these levers will actually raise or lower the valve. So you push this button up right here, rotate the levers, and you're either in the up or down position. Okay, so here we're in the up position for pumping. And at the point where no more discharge is coming out, and before turning off the motor, you rotate the lever, and now you can turn off the motor and the foot valve. It's as if you put your hand over the bottom of the tube. The drum is empty, 99.98%, and you have a tube full of product that you can put in the next drum or ca capture in a bucket, whatever you, whatever you want to do. Okay, the next model is the 426, and it's similar to the 425 in that it has levers. But what it is instead is a combination pump and mixer. So you can notice the holes here. This is uh, just to give you an example. Uh, so picture this pump with holes. And if we wanted to, say, pump a drum of oil and water, uh, what, what, what occurs in storage? They separate. So now the customer said, look, I, I want to remix that, then pump it out. So in this case, uh, you, all, you have to close off the discharge. So we can furnish these pumps with an NPT, which makes it easy to put a ball valve in line. You close off your ball valve, you open up your holes, and then you turn the motor on, you have mixing action in the vessel. When you're satisfied with that, you can uh, open your ball valve and begin to discharge, and then gradually or all at once close the holes and it strictly becomes a pump. So keep that in mind. And just so you know, we can also take a regular 430 pump, close off the discharge with a blank cover, drill permanent holes, and we've, we've made just a strictly a mixer from one of our pumps, and that's a big money saver. So the fifth and final version of the impeller pumps is the 427, and that's a, it's a sanitary pump. You can see it has a tri-clamp, inch and a half tri-clamp uh, discharge port. This comes in a 3A version. The 3A is a dairy standard. The dairy is concerned about bacteria. So this pump as, a, as an entire, entire component is submitted to 3A for approval. And this pump um, is uh, um, electro-polished to a 30 RA and then hand-polished to a 4 RA. Now we have another version of this 427. We call it our non-3A and it's electro-polished to a 30 and not hand-polished. But other than that, it's nearly identical and it's about a $300 savings over the 3A version. So uh, keep, just keep in mind that we have two different price points when it comes to a sanitary, a true sanitary uh, impeller pump. Okay, so that, uh, that takes care of the, uh, the five materials and the five different designs. Now, let's talk about the fact that uh, there are customers that no matter how convincing you are that it's, it pays to purchase a flux pump, that they'll never, never regret it, that the cost of ownership is less, there's always a customer that's going to buy strictly on price. He's going to run down to Granger and buy a $600 drum pump. So our answer to that is our Junior Flux and Combi Flux. So many of you that are familiar with the Junior Flux, you may know that that comes as an assembly. Pump and motor in the box. And if you wanted to remove the motor, you have to get out the screwdriver and remove three screws. So if you're only selling one, then the Junior Flux is a good way to go because it's a very uh, price competitive. Now, we also came out in recent years with the Combi Flux, and you recognize that because of these green ears that fold down, and this allows for quick detach and attachment of the motor. So the beauty of this is you could sell multiple tubes and one motor that can be moved from pump to pump. Okay, so let's talk about the pump tubes for a minute. Uh, we, these, are, these come in polypropylene, Kynar, PVDF, and 316 stainless steel. They come in different lengths. This is the shortest length. Uh, it's about 20 inches, uh, perfect for a bucket. Then we go to a 27 inch, and that's for carboys, let's say. And then the 39 inch is the most popular, and that would be for a 55 gallon drum. And then we also have the 
uh, longer tube for the tote or the IBC. So a 47 inch poly is uh, coming out next month, which is June, and we're, uh, we're pretty excited about that added capability. So let's talk about, well I have one here, the, the, how to measure a pump's length. From, from the inlet to the center line of the discharge, that dimension is your length. So um, the 39 is the most popular again for the 55 gallon drum. Okay, so next uh, we're going to talk about the, the uh, cordless motor that, that came out. And this is a, a lithium battery operated unit. And this uh, gives total free, freedom to the customer. He can take this uh, in a service vehicle, he can take it on a mezzanine, in a parking lot, wherever he, wherever he can go, and not worry about extension cords or, power, or, or just the or power cord at all. And what makes this unique is this will empty 10 drums on one charge. Many of our competitors that have something similar, one drum and an overnight charge. Our charge recharge is 30 minutes. And it's very easy to remove this lithium battery. And if you have a spare one, you can plug that in and keep going. Now, there are times when a customer will say, look, you know, I'm putting three totes one on top of the other, and I'm draining from the top to the middle to the bottom. I cannot use an immersion pump. Okay, we, we understand that. So uh, we want to stay in the game. So we, we now offer pumps that, have, that can be uh, utilized for a bottom discharge. So this stainless pump, comes with a tri-clamp inlet. We can get it with NPT or hose bar. It's a 430 design, so easily clean. But in the sanitary look here, you can pump flammables, uh, for example, alcohols or uh, jet fuel, but we pump perfumes and, uh, and flavorings and things of that nature as well. But these, uh, these impeller pumps will handle viscosities up to uh, 1,200 center points. And we offer a couple different uh, impellers so Taylor, let's do a close up here. And you can see uh, the one that I'm moving right here, the one that uh, looks like a boat prop. This is your uh, axial shape and this is your high volume. The, uh, the radial is your, uh, we call it our Z impeller for high head and higher viscosity capability. So the lower, it gives you lower flow, which sometimes is, is safer when we're transferring dangerous chemicals. So to get down to say three to five gallons a minute, we would start with the Z impeller, a variable speed motor, and we're there. Another, uh, just, just so you know, we also have a poly version of this externally mounted pump. And these are very, very portable, a lot of advantages to this, so something to, to keep in mind.